Hello, my name is Kenneth Blackburn, and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing the Romantic period. Firstly, some gen general information about the background of the period. Uh, the period spanned from 1820 to 1900, and it can be characterized by vast social upheavals. Some of the key features include industrialization, urbanization, secularization, and consumerism. The first industrial revolution, which began in the late 18th century, expanded the British homeland, remaking the economies and societies of the Low Countries, the Rhineland, North Italy, and the Northern United States. A few decades later, the second industrial re revolution led to massive urbanization and high levels of productivity, profit, and prosperity. In the Middle East, the Islamic gunpowder empires fell into decline, and European imperialism brought much of South Asia, Southeast Asia, and almost all of Africa under colonial rule. This period also saw the collapse of the large Spanish and Mughal empires, which paved the way for a growing influence of the British, French, German, Russian, Austro-Hungarian, -Hungar Italian, and Japanese empires, along with the United States. Following, following the Napoleonic Wars, the British and Russian empires expanded greatly. The Ottoman Empire underwent a period of westernization and reform, which increased its control over territories in the Middle East. However, it remained in, in decline and lost territory in the Balkans and North Africa. The 19th century was an era of rapidly accelerating scientific discovery and invention with significant developments in the field of mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, electricity, and metallurgy. This period is notorious for the employment of young children in factories and in mines, as well as strict social norms and gender roles. It also saw the creation and development of many sports. This period saw the second and third great awakenings, uh, as far as religion goes. The Second Awakening was unique because it moved beyond the educated elite of New England to those who were less wealthy and less educated. The Third Awakening was characterized by new denominations, active missionary work, and the social gospel approach to social issues. Fashion for women was extravagant and extroverted displays of the female silhouette with corsets and full skirts and decorative gowns, and fashion for men was three-piece suits tailored for usefulness in business as well as sporting activities. Secondly, I'm, I want to talk about the Romantic period music background. Romantic music is a stylistic movement in Western classical music, and it's closely related to the concept of Romanticism, which is artistic and intellectual movement and was characterized by its emphasis on emotion and individualism, as well as glorification of the past and nature, preferring the medieval over the classical. Composers during this period sought to create music that was individual, individualistic, excuse me, emotional, dramatic, and often programmatic. Excuse me, I've said that wrong. Romantic music was often inspired by nature, literature, poetry, supernatural elements, or the fine arts. It included features uh, such as increased chromaticism and moved away from the traditional forms. In part, romantic music was great was a re revolt, excuse me, against social and political norms of the Age of Enlightenment and a reaction against the scientific rationalization of nature. Uh, some characteristics characteristics often attributed to romanticism in this period of uh, romantic music. It was a greater tonal range, the use of wider range of dynamics supported by a large orchestration, uh, program music became more common, the use of new or previously not so common musical structures like the song cycle, nocturne, concert, etude, arabesque, I'm sure I said that wrong, and Rhapsody alongside the traditional classical genres. There was an increase in virtuosic players found in orchestrations, uh, large grand orchestras, a harmonic structure based on movement from tonal to subdominant, and a great greater emphasis on melody. And thirdly, the pieces I chose was Waltz of the Flowers by Tchaikovsky. I'm sure I said that wrong as well. 
uh, piece. The piece is from uh, the second act of The Nutcracker. It is very popular. I'm for sure we've all heard it at some point or another. And it has been arranged uh, for various instruments and for various compositions of instruments. Uh, and I chose it because it's, it's associated with the holiday season. And uh, for the most part, the holiday season puts people in a better mood and they're more... They're just nicer, I guess, I guess you could say. The second piece I chose was Chrysanthemum by Giacomo Pacchini. I'm sure I said that wrong as well. Uh, it's a string quartet. And the piece was a quick response to the sudden death of Amadeo di Savoia, which was the Duke of Asta, which was a friend of uh, the composer's. And uh, he wrote it in one night. Uh, he's said to have wrote it in one night. The song is named after the flower chrysanthemums, which represents heroism, loyalty, and mourning traditionally. And again, uh, I chose it because he, he wrote it in one night, which I think expresses the emotion uh, to the death of his friend. And the two songs, uh, I, to compare and contrast them, they're just very emotionally charged, I guess, for me. Like one puts you in a good, good mood and the other, is, you're lamenting the death of your friend, I guess. And that's all I have. We'll see you next week. Bye.